what does it take to get good at a game? If you're already a relatively good player, then chances are you have a good base of game knowledge and mechanics. And these two things can easily get you to an average or slightly above average rank. But what does it take to go from good to great, to bridge the gap from where you are now to the next level of skill? Well, one common assumption is that it's largely dependent on mechanics, and there is a good reason to believe this. We all love watching highlights of pro players that emphasize insane mechanical executions. These are moments that seem almost impossible and demonstrate near-perfect combinations of skills. After seeing highlights and compilations like this, it's easy to assume that this is exactly what makes those players so good. So, if you want to make the leap from average to exceptional, is this what you should focus on improving? Well, honestly, this assumption is a bit of a leap, and just taking a guess and putting efforts into random areas of our performance is an easy way to make slow progress and hit skill plateaus. And quite honestly, this is what holds most players back. They make big assumptions about what to work on without really having a high level of insight. So, to avoid this and to get much more reliable answers, I reached out to two professional esports coaches for some advice. Both Jane and Tickety have high-level coaching experience in the Overwatch League, working with the Dallas Fuel. Now, whether you play Overwatch or not, their advice still applies. In fact, they illuminated three key factors that anyone can apply to go from an average level of skill to an exceptional level of skill. So if you want to make rapid progress and finally break through to the next rank, then get ready to upgrade your approach to improving. Anyone with good enough mechanics can reach like at least like a diamond tier, uh, just on mechanics alone. Um, but from that point onward, like the decisions you make, like everything from like hero select uh, to positioning to target focus to uh, ultimate economy to the way you're communicating to your team. All those things are becoming more and more of a factor to win your games. You can't just like solo carry a game anymore. So the jump from like diamond to master to grandmaster um, requires a different kind of work. Uh, and it's, it's all mentality and um, focus on analytics and what you're doing decision making wise. Uh, that matters more there. Realistically, getting to a good level of skill in any game requires a high level of mechanics. But as Tickety mentions, there is a point where you need to start shifting your focus and working on different aspects of your performance. He specifically mentions two key aspects, mentality and decision making. So let's break them both down and figure out how to master each aspect so you can climb to a higher level of skill. And let's start with your mentality. Being able to control your mentality and control the emotion that goes into playing the game uh, and then make proactive decisions based on that is where a lot of the learning comes in. Losses will lead to frustration, so it all comes with uh, staying mentally stable and like avoiding those like peaks and valleys of, of emotion, basically. So the key to developing a greater mentality is to build a level of emotional stability. Tickety explained this as avoiding the peaks and valleys, meaning the emotional highs and lows that come naturally through the ups and downs of the game. When you let negative emotions and even positive emotions control your mindset, you'll begin to get caught up in trivial details of the game. You'll lose focus on the long-term goal of improvement and allow emotions to hijack your performance. So, attaining a higher level of skill and performance requires gaining stronger control over your emotions. But how exactly do you do this? Well, the first step is to address your ego. If you say you want to hit Grandmaster, but then you're going every day and then raging at your teammates or like quitting after two games, like, are you really trying to meet that goal or are you just trying to have fun with the game and you're not having fun? Is that like, is that the issue? Uh, eliminate your ego as much as you can. So the game is no longer about you and how you feel about the game. It doesn't matter if you hate the game. It doesn't matter if you love the game. It doesn't matter if you're winning every game or losing every game your mentality going into playing should be as level as possible. So start letting go of your ego, focusing less on yourself, on how well you're doing or how you feel. 
when you get too attached to that focus on yourself, you lose vision of the greater objectives and let low points of the game cloud your judgment. Ideally, you want to get yourself into a mindset where you can roll with the punches, brush off the low points of the game, and move on quickly towards the next opportunities to learn. So, to get out of your own head, focus on the greater objectives of the game. Focus on your role within the team and your personal long-term goals. These will ultimately take your focus away from yourself and allow for greater resilience. But the other emotional vulnerability that you need to shield yourself from is your own expectations, especially when setting goals. Um, if there's something out of your control or something that doesn't seem very realistic, um, try to avoid that because you're just going to end up beating yourself down. You can't, you can't go in the day and say, like, I want to win every single ranked game I play. It's like, that's, that's not an attainable goal because that's not 100% within your control. So being realistic with those expectations uh, makes those blows easier to deal with and helps you sort of reset mentally uh, to focus on the next step. So when it comes to setting goals or personal objectives, you don't want them to be unrealistic or out of your control because your expectations are one of the biggest culprits for emotional instability. So start paying attention to when your emotions, ego, and expectations take control of your decision making. Then swap that mindset with a focus on realistic and controllable goals. As you feel the ups and downs of the game, let it roll off you as if pressing a reset button on your emotions. The more you practice this mentality, the more clear your judgment will become and the faster you'll improve. Unfortunately, your mentality is only part of the equation. The other aspect we need to improve is your decision making. But how exactly can we improve that? I think that for casual players, just playing is fine because especially when you're looking at a game as complicated as overwatch there are often times that you can know exactly what you're doing wrong or at least believe that you know what you're doing wrong right you know you can be like oh you know my aim sucks or my positioning sucks or i'm not using my ult correctly or something like that but as long as a person feels like they have a reason why they're not improving or why they don't currently deserve grandmaster and they're working towards that that's fine but when people start to get to a rank that they're stuck at or their improvement or progress peters out and staggers or stalls out, at that point, there needs to be serious effort so that your playtime is always consciously put towards trying to solve an improvement or solve a problem or improve a skill set. So going from just playing the game a ton, grinding out games, to then analyzing what's working and what's not working for you as an individual is like an important step that not enough people make, I don't think. Because the decision-making process comes a lot from experience, but also from understanding what you're doing in-game. And you're not going to understand what you're doing properly until you get a, a bigger perspective. So decision-making is an aspect of the game that we naturally improve on from just playing the game over and over. But eventually, we will reach a certain level of skill where we need to switch our method of training to gain a greater perspective. And of course, taking the time to go back into a replay viewer or a VOD and seeing your performance from a third person view can open up a wider perspective on what you're doing well and what you need to work on. More specifically, you can begin to identify what habits and decision making patterns are holding you back. Now, as Tickety mentioned, this is something most players fail to do. Not because they don't know it's an option, but because they don't know how necessary it is. But to really understand how valuable this aspect of your training is, consider how much time Jane recommends you spend planning and reviewing your games. And when I'm coming from like an aviation background, in the aviation world, you're looking at four hours of prep and practice to one hour of actual performance or activity. In the esports world, uh, you're looking at, at the professional level, it's closer to one to one. So if you do one hour of playtime, you're doing about one hour of prep or review for that playtime. Most players who understand the value of prep and review have likely never considered investing half of their time in it. And while this ratio will be much different for lower level players, it still highlights how important it is as you climb to higher ranks. But it's one thing to understand the importance of reviewing and a completely different thing to apply it effectively. So what exactly should you be looking for when reviewing your games? From a professional 
coaching perspective, um, what I do is we look for trends. Um, so if there's something that's we're doing consistently, but it's not potentially the best or the correct decision, we look to isolate those situations in game and try to change the decision making around it. So if someone's playing a certain hero uh, into and they're struggling in maybe against a certain other hero on the enemy team or they're struggling uh, with using certain abilities on that hero, like their ultimate for example, you look at every situation that that, that, that comes up in game uh, and you look at all the information around it as much as you can. So if it worked out, why did it work out? If it didn't work out, why not? What I like to, what I used to tell people when they were like trying to get better, like in ranked and stuff like that, is look at every active decision you make. Um, so every time you go on a flank as a character, or every time you go aggressive, every time you use an ultimate, why did you use it, and what caused you to make that decision in in the moment? When playing game to game, it's hard to notice trends or errors in your personal decision making. So you need to analyze your own gameplay to break down suboptimal decisions. As you review your games, you'll look for moments where something went wrong. In these moments, you'll begin to recognize two types of errors. The first kind occurs when you tried to do everything right, you had a plan, but something went wrong that was mostly out of your control. Perhaps you just got mechanically outplayed or something happened with your team. From these kinds of errors, there really isn't that much to learn. But the second type is decision making errors, such as making suboptimal plays or picks based on the map, composition, or other key factors. Decision making errors can also come up if you are being too aggressive or too passive, as well as when you're using your resources inefficiently. And this is where most of your analysis comes in, identifying poor decisions, suboptimal levels of aggression, or inefficient uses of resources. So as you break down situations and review your decision making process within different contexts, you will begin to learn a lot. But to the untrained eye, it's really easy to miss key details. Over time, you'll fix many of the problems in your performance, but a certain amount will go completely unsolved. You will continue to make similar mistakes over and over and misdiagnose the root cause. To the right person, your mistakes are extremely obvious, but due to a lack of knowledge, you'll never be able to identify the issues on your own. This situation happens a surprising amount, because it's impossible to identify an issue that you're not qualified to recognize. So how do you overcome this? Like it, Just get a different perspective. That's the, the really important one. But you need a different perspective from a source that has more information or more capabilities than you do. That's either, you know, somebody at your rank who's at a different role, uh, a better player than you. If you don't feel like there's any better players than you, then you do need to look for an analyst or a coach who can actually say that, like, because of this, have you considered this? Um, and somebody whose really job is it to start trying to min-max your gameplay. So when you feel stuck, or simply want to make progress faster, actively seek out external advice. The biggest mistake is assuming you can become the very best on your own. This lone wolf approach to improvements is very limited, hence why top pro players and even semi pro players work with coaches every day. Now if you are at an average rank or below average rank, then this sort of external perspective can easily come from a player who is simply a few ranks above you. But eventually, once you reach a higher rank, you'll need to seek guidance from high quality coaches. People who understand how to break down a game, extract highlights, and effectively communicate the lessons to you personally. So begin by building your emotional stability. Now, Tickety mentioned that emotional swings will still inevitably happen, so don't get discouraged if you can't master this in a day. But when you do notice your emotions taking control, analyze the situation and see how your ego or your expectations are contributing to your mindset. Then work backwards to readjust your focus and set new goals with more realistic expectations. The more you practice your emotional stability over the next few days and weeks, the more clear your judgment will become and the faster you'll improve. As you master your mentality and reap the benefits of faster improvements, you'll also need to upgrade your decision making. While this is something that you've likely developed from just playing the game, 
perhaps even with very periodic reviews, you'll now need to step up the frequency of your reviews to a daily routine. In fact, at a high enough level, this will become up to half of your training. But of course, even reviewing your own games has its limits. So, along with reviewing your own matches, you'll need to seek external advice from high-level players and coaches. And collectively, these three pieces of advice are enough to take you from where you are now to a high level of skill. So begin by mastering your mentality, reviewing your matches to improve your decision making, and seeking expert advice to overcome skill plateaus. By doing these, you will begin to surpass an average rank, you'll begin to make rapid progress, and finally reach an exceptional level of skill. Now, if you feel like you're stuck at a skill plateau and you want to get more advanced tips beyond what we mentioned in this video, then check out our new step-by-step -step course for ranking up fast in just 66 days. It's designed to take you from an average level of skill to a high level of skill in the fastest time possible. It includes over 30 short videos that you won't find on our YouTube channel, all including advanced strategies and scientific research for improving your skills faster. So if you've been struggling to rank up and you want to play with a much higher level of skill, then check out the course for yourself. You can find a link for it in the description below. And of course, this video is also brought to you by our very own supplement called E-Advantage. In short, E-Advantage is a cheaper, healthier, and much more effective alternative to energy drinks. If you want to get insane focus without the jitters and sugar crash, and you want to play at the peak of your abilities during important games, then I highly recommend E-Advantage. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can find a link for it in the description below. And of course, I hope you guys loved this video. If you did, then leave a comment down below and let me know what your biggest takeaway is. And as I usually do, I'll be responding to every single comment posted within the first few days, so let me know exactly what you think. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.